Dobrý den! In this video we are going to take a look at adjectives, but we are going to narrow it down, of course. As you probably know, Czech adjectives have different endings. We have two types of adjectives, hard and soft. On the left side we have typical endings for hard adjectives, because they contain hard Y. And these endings are typical for soft adjectives, because they contain soft I, miněké I. And today we are going to focus on one specific group, and that is OV, which changes with each gender. So OV, OVA for feminine and OVE for neuter in their singular form. Why these endings? Because they are super common. Jdeme na to. Ahoj, vítejte na mém kanále Czech by Zuzka, kde vám pomocí angličtiny vysvětluju českou gramatiku. An adjective ending in ov, ova or ove very commonly describes a flavor. And the ending of the adjectives, whether it's ov, ova or ove, depends on what is it that we describe. So this might be a little confusing at the beginning, but it's completely logical. Let's look at an easy example. This is an orange. To je pomeranč. Pomeranč. Pomeranč is masculine, which is not really important in this case. Pomeranč. And when we want to describe it, something has an orange flavor or it's made of oranges, we add ovi, ova or ove. When something is of a masculine gender, such as uh, Juice. Juice is masculine. So if we want to say that we are drinking orange juice, we would add OVY. So you would take the word pomeranč plus OVY, which would give us pomerančový, pomerančový juice. Pomerančový juice because juice is masculine. Pomerančový juice. Here it's easy because pomeranč is also masculine, there is no confusion here. If we describe something that's feminine, for example, limonada, lemonade, you can have an orange lemonade, then uh, we take pomeranč and we add ova, ova, so you would have pomerančová limonada, because logically Limonada is feminine, so we have to have an OVA ending. It doesn't matter that pomeranč is masculine. It's just the base word that we work with, the flavor in this case. So when something is neuter, you know what to do. Neuter, such as a flavored beer. It's also common as a summer drink that you can have beer with a little bit of orange juice, orange beer, which would be pomeranč. Čové, pomerančové. So we have O, V, E, pomerančové pivo. Pivo is neuter and we added O, V, E, pomeranč plus O, V, E. Perfect. So these are singular forms. Of course, if we had plural forms, it would be a little bit different. If you wanted to say um, orange juices, it would be pomerančové juicy. And then pomerančové limonády a pomerančová piva, which follows the normal pattern for adjectives, for hard adjectives that change with every gender and number. If you want to practice all these typical endings, you can watch my video from before. So what happens if we have the word uh, chocolate? How do you say chocolate in Czech? Čokoláda. Čokoláda. If I want to say a chocolate cake, which is dort, and dort is masculine, it would be čokoláda plus this ending. But čokoláda ovi doesn't sound very good, because why having two vowels next to each other? In Czech we always get rid of at least one. <laughs> so we get rid of the vowel and we have čokoládový. Čokoládový dort. And we work with this base form for the feminine and neuter as well. So, for example, ice cream, zmrzlina, made out of chocolate. So, čokoládová zmrzlina. Čokoládová zmrzlina. Or if I want to say a chocolate 
drink. Drink in Czech is uh, piti, for example, or napoy, but I want to use an, another one. So piti is to piti, which would be, tell me, chocoladové piti. Excellent. So like I said, it doesn't matter what the gender is the word that we work with, the source or the flavor in this case. What is important is what it is that was made out of this or this. The gender depends on it. It refers to it. We use these adjectives when we describe what our tea is made of. For example, chai. Chai is masculine. So think about all the flavors, all the herbs that the tea can be made of. I can think of the word mint, which in Czech is mata, mata, and just like chocolada. It has an A, which we will get rid of because we need something that ends with a consonant at the end. So how do you say uh, mint tea? Matový chai. Matový chai. Perfect. We will stick with the tea. Now, what else? I'm going to use some words that you probably don't know, but uh, that will also be helpful. Elderberry. Elderberry tea, uh, which is bes. Here it's easy. Bes. Besides meaning without, it also means elderberry. And so the word bes already has a consonant, so we just add ovi again. Bezovi chai. Bezovi chai. Uh, you could have, I don't know, lemon tea. Citron. Citronovi chai. Citronovi chai. Or you can also have a common nettle tea. I had a video about it last year. How the nettle, the stinging nettle or the common nettle is beneficial for our health. So that's kopřiva. Kopřiva, which also finishes with an A. If I say that I'm drinking a nettle tea, it would be kopřivový čaj. Kopřivový čaj. Now one more. Mm, šípek. Šípek is a uh, rose hip, rose hip. And here is an E in the penultimate position, which is a troublemaker usually. And uh, of course, it also has its demands here. It will disappear. We will not say šípekový, but we will say šípkový čaj, šípkový čaj. Of course, this doesn't apply to um, the words like black tea, that's černý, that's a different ending. Zelení also. Colors do not fall to this category. But when you want to talk about the source, what is it made of? It often is with these endings. Now let's practice with the word limonada. Limonada is feminine. We can you also have an elderberry lemonade. What would happen? Bezova limonada. Bezova limonada. Or we can also recycle this uh, mint. How do you say mint lemonade? Matová limonada. Matová limonada. One more. Uh, cucumber lemonade. Okurka. Okurka. Finishes with an A. So, okurková limonada. Super. This would be the same for ice cream as well. Zmrzlina is feminine. And if you wanted to say vanilla ice cream, for example, which is vanilka. Vanilka. And we get rid of the A here. Vanilková zmrzlina. Vanilková zmrzlina. You can have all kinds of combinations. A more flavored beer, uh, pizza, for example. If you want to say this is cheese pizza, you would say pizza and then sír together with ova. Sírová pizza. Sírová pizza. When we talk about apple, jablko, jablko it uh, has two possibilities. We can say jablkový following the same pattern. Jablko, we don't use double O, obviously. Jablkovi. Uh, but we can also say jablečný. So if you want to say an apple pie, you would say jablkový koláč or jablečný koláč. Both are okay. And there is an exception with rajče, a tomato. You would not say rajčový, but rajčatový. We would use the base form that we use in the plural, rajčatový. <laughs> when else can we use these endings? For example, when we uh, make adjectives from months. So we take the word srpen, for example, August. And if you want to say uh, an August afternoon, you would use srpen plus that particular ending. 
Uh, how do you say afternoon? It's uh, odpoledne and it's neuter. So he would uh, obviously get rid of the E here and it would be srpnové odpoledne. Srpnové odpoledne. An August afternoon. The same here. Říjen, October. We can say an uh, October evening. Večer is masculine, so it would be říjnový večer. It doesn't refer only to months, but for example, some of the seasons. For example, prázdniny, which is a holiday of school. Uh, we would say prázdninový, for example, the holiday day. Prázdninový den. The ending ovi, ova, ove, is very common and it's also distributed pretty randomly. So I would not be able to give you categories. This is for months, but for example, when we go to seasons of the year, uh, it's not jarový, but it's jarní, spring. Jarní, letní, podzimní, zimní, as well as days of the week. Pondělní, úterní, Středeční, etc. So. Another typical area where we use OV is when we talk about length and that's related to both time and uh, space when we measure something. So talking about uh, measurements like a centimeter, centimeter, if you say that something is of one centimeter, you would say centimetrový, for example, a one centimeter difference, which is a rozdíl, rozdíl is difference. So that's masculine and we would say centimetrový, centimetrový rozdíl. Or if you want to say that that building is a 10 meter tall building, in Czech we use an adjective for this. So you would first create an adjective from metr, which is metrový. And uh, we will talk about a uh, building that's budova. So we have metrová budova. That would be just a meter tall building. And if it's 10 meter tall, it would be deseti. Deseti metrová as one word. Deseti metrová, deseti metrová budova. Kilometrová, etc. And also talking about time, as I said. So minuta. And uh, let's say you have a one minute delay. A delay is spoždění. And that's to spoždění. Minutové, minutové spoždění. Or 10 minute delay. Desetiminutové spoždění. Pětiminutové spoždění. Or an hour delay. So it would be what? Hodinové, hodinové spoždění. Or if you say that something has a certain amount of pages, which would be stránka, stránka. So if you say that a uh, 100 page book, it would be knížka. 100 stránková knížka. To je moje knížka. And uh, just in case it has uh, 210 pages, that's already a little too complicated, but I could say 210 stránková knížka. And one very important category is of course women's last names. You were probably thinking about it at the beginning of the video and uh, I couldn't forget it. This ending is very common in the last names of Czech women. So I was talking about source and this has to do something with it. So if Mr. Hruška, Mr. Pear, <laughs> marries someone, his wife is going to be called Hruškova. Hruškova, Hruška, Hruškova. We could argue that this is a bit sexist but uh, the language itself is based on gender so we cannot argue about this. Uh, this is a common practice used around the 15th century already or sometime before and it was a way to mark who the wife is married to. This was not only to refer to married women but for example if there was a person who is a blacksmith kovář, if he had a daughter and her name was Anna for example She's the daughter of a blacksmith, so she would be Kovářova, Anna. That's one possibility. Kovářova, which literally means the blacksmith's daughter. Or it could also be spelled with uh, Čárka. So they were actually both 
practices sometimes spelled with uh, with this accent as an adjective or sometimes without it working like this and obviously it's a tradition even nowadays although now women can choose whether they want to keep this ending or not so let's try this if mr blaha has a wife her name would be what her last name would be mrs blahova blahova and of course this is not the only ending at the end i would like to point out that there are more uses of this ending for example we could also use it for some material for example a paper papir if we say it's made of paper it would be papirovi papirova tashka a paper bag or kof kof is a metal kovovi nush a metal knife kovovi nush uh, or a látka is a fabric, látkový ubrousek. And like I said, it doesn't apply to everything. On the other hand, we have skleněný, made of glass, or dřevěný, made of wood. Or for instance, uh, when we talk about products and we want to say what they are for, what part of body they are for. So we talk about a target in this case. This cream is for face, it's a facial cream, so it's a uh, obliche obličejový krém or body cream tělo tělový krém tělový krém or hair vlasy vlasový šampon vlasový šampon but then again we have zubní ušní so this is it let me know what other forms you came across with these endings we can put together a nice list of these common adjectives used in the Czech environment don't forget, if you want to practice the cases, here is my ebook, just in case, or also my other ebook, my first Czech adventure, which is great for beginners, elementary and intermediate learners. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Mějte se hezky, ahoj!